The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Uh, now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industries down 74, NASDAQ's off 15, S&P's off 4.5. Gold, gold down four dollars and seventy cents at fourteen ninety three an ounce. You get silver down eight cents, seventeen dollars fifty three cents an ounce. Light sweet crude up forty eight cents, fifty four dollars forty one cents a barrel. Notes Whoops. and notes what and bonds. You get the uh, ten year note uh, up one tick, trading at a price point that wasn't supposed to happen. We'll get it. We'll uh, you get I ten, think notes ten and bonds. years up about one. Yeah. Uh, the thirty years up about two points in King Dollar. King Dollar. Uh, bottom line has been going down the last yeah. few days. Uh, we're down 157, trading at 97.452. The euro is at 111. The yen is at 108.5. And, and the pound is at 128. Pound. And, you ready for that Brexit vote tomorrow? Yeah, let's go look at that. <laughs> that, that there's no doubt. What I mean, are they pricing in, man? The, the whole conversation I heard this morning is nobody knows what's going to happen if their vote doesn't pass. Yeah, and you know, bottom Place line. Place your wagers, you know. Yeah, the bottom line is that that pound has gone, uh, you know, six days. We just went from this 122 to 128. Remarkable. And it looks like, you know, 133 is on the agenda, and it doesn't look like that, that, that's going to be that hard to get to. We take a look at the euro, and the euro likes it too. Um, let's get currency in here. How about where's currency? There we go. We take a look at the. Uh, Euro, and, you know, that's got its head stuck up, too. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. A, it's up there. And that's a lot of that dollar weakness, right, for sure. Yeah. You All know, the, in terms no of doubt. you got the euro, 60% of the DXY index. Yep. So just off yep. the euro strength alone, um, you're seeing some, some weakness in the dollar index. It is. I mean, we and talked to our man Teddy Kegstad. He had right. said that earlier, you know, that we've right. had quite a run in the dollar, but you've had some real pressure from pressure at, in terms of pressure to the upside in the dollar because of the pressure to the downside right. in the euro and the pound. And right. guess what? You know, you might have seen the worst of that, and you might see some dollar pullback if right. you get some reprieve, and that's kind of what we've seen there. Well, yeah. it's going to get, it's going to oh get, boy. It, it's going to get, it's, not, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really, it's broken, you know, but yeah. if we get a break like that next week. Yes. Uh, and what, we're, Dramatic, talking, what yeah. we're talking about, folks, is that, you know, right now we're at 97, 460, so you can make the case you're going to go to 95, sure. you know, 96, you know, 95, June 28th, yeah. okay. Well, you get another bar like this, it's going to be like, okay, man, you know, you're going to go down to, what is that, 89. That's, you know, that's... Uh, if that's the case, then the euro and the pound are going to be rocking. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Now, what you have out here, this is, this is the type of day that I really dig inside the metals market. And this is why, folks, okay? The metals market has held up with the dollar being at highs, okay? So you can see the gold contract's down $5.20 right now. Now, it's light volume, but that's where, on a fundamental basis, it absolutely is like, okay, that's twisted. And, and the reason I like that is that that's what normally does happen in markets. Okay, the markets are so deviant that yeah. it's like, okay, man, you know, what does that mean? Well, yeah. guess what? What we're really doing here is just going sideways. The market's not saying anything, but when you first look at it, even me being a bull, I'm saying to myself, oh, this is what a trip this is, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we'll see where this whole uh, baby shakes out. So just to stay with some of the headlines, uh, Macron, right? I mean, this yes. article, I'm not sure when. Um, he made this statement, but this is where you're going to get a lot of rhetoric. Now, Macron has been pretty tough uh, during these Brexit negotiations. Yes. But, you know, he's saying out there that the U.K. shouldn't get a new delay if Johnson loses the vote. That's kind of pushing for, you know, you lose the vote, the deadline still approaches. There's going to be other people saying, no, 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 no. We're, we're working on a deal here. Maybe we need another delay, right? So it'll be interesting to see how this thing kicks out and what happens. So I don't think a new extension should be granted, Macron said at a press conference. After a summit of EU leaders in Brussels, the October 31st deadline must be met. It's pretty yeah. pretty remarkable to see the continued. Uh, and that, that vote tomorrow, man, for Parliament. Tomorrow, huh? Saturday. Okay. The Brits working overtime on Saturday. Um, Macron's stan stance increases the risk that the UK will crash out of the EU without a deal on October 31st. But it also increases the pressure on those lawmakers. Yeah. And that's probably why he's putting that out there, right? right? right. Um, who are unsure whether they should back it 
or not, and the pound dipping, I guess, slightly on those comments. Evidently, after three and a half years, everyone's getting fed up with it. <laughs> they <laughs> should be, no matter yeah. what side on your right. you know? I mean, I mean because uncertainty is, is harmful no matter what. Right. So they got to figure out a, a path to get out of the, you know, let's, let's move past the Brexit conversation because, man, we're coming up on another presidential election in 13 months. Brexit was before. Yeah. Donald Trump was elected. I mean, right. he, it's almost remarkable how long. I don't think most people realize that we're going on three, three and a half years. Right. It's oh, no, just, listen, I, it's, time it's, flies, there's, there's but no, it's remarkable. It's, yeah, yeah. There, there's no doubt about that. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. You get a sideways market out here. The market itself, folks, is having a tough time at that S&P 3000, 3005. Yeah. Uh, we've been up here since, uh, I think, last July. Let me just look at this. It's actually, we've been talking about it. The S&P is about, what? 40 points above we were almost two years ago, actually. Let me put this up. So, what is that? Yeah. Oh, no, one year ago. One year. Almost to yeah. the, yep. Because what is that, a weekly? Yeah, so just yeah. over a year. That's remarkable. 40 point, no, 60 points above. Yeah. And you back yeah. it up here, man. We're not 2872. Yeah. I mean, right. we have 100-point S&P swings. Oh, yeah. You know, what is this bar we just did? That was 140 S&P point right. swing. So we were, right. you know, just... I mean, not to mention, how, how low we go there? 2892 last week. Yeah. And you're talking about going all the way back to the beginning of 2018. Look at that. Yeah, yeah and we're coming yeah. into, and that's where we talked about. Remember, right. almost two years. Right, um, right. That we, yeah. And we were. We were having that discussion when we right. were actually at that level, right. which is this month. Okay? And that got you back in the lower range. Yeah. Now, it didn't stay there at the end no, of the No, I mean, week. let me put this yeah. on a monthly, because I'm right. curious, because the monthly's going to dip right into it for sure. We'll put it on a five-year monthly even. Um, so we're going back, that is the January of 2018, the high yeah. of 3,027. Right. And man, oh man, that monthly is going to be in it. The low of 28.55. I mean, just remarkable, man. Now, you know what's cool, folks? If you happen to be in candlestick charting or council charting, it's the same thing, okay? This is very bearish, okay? So this is what you have. You have a shooting star, which is a bearish signal. And the way a shooting star works is that you basically wait for a confirmation. The confirmation would be that you get a lower low. On the, and it's not a monthly, okay? So you get the shooting star in July. You go to a lower low in August, right? Now it comes all the way back up. But this little baby right here is a hanging man. And a hanging man is also a bearish indication. And the same deal is that your confirmation on a hanging man would be that you get a lower low. Um, not a lower low. Not a lower low here, but you get a lower close at the end of the month. So that's kind of interesting. And you see that a lot, that you get a bearish signal. Test it with another bearish signal and, you know, what ends up happening with a hanging man. Now, you can see, if you're watching Tiger TV, that looks like a hammer. And it hammer is, it's the exact same symbol, but a hammer is at the bottom. <laughs> That's funny. Look at that bottom. Um, and July, no, February of 2016. And a hanging man is at the top of an uptrend. That's how those things work. Uh, so that's pretty intriguing on a monthly basis because yeah. that's, that's actually hard to do. Uh, particularly when you're, you're testing something else. But that's that's where this baby's set up right now. Um, Sunday night. So Sunday night, there's going to be monster action inside these currency markets. It sure is, Well, man. probably the S&P too, but it sure inside is. the currency markets, you're talking about real action. It'd be interesting to see those headlines tomorrow as it comes out. And then, of course, as the markets start open for the first trading, depending right. on what happens, right. man. If they it's get a, it's going to be pretty wild if Johnson pulls it off, man. Yeah, you know? and... Uh, all the ex the expectation is much closer vote, no matter which way it goes, right. as compared with the May votes, where she was right. losing by 100, 200, right. um, much closer, and that's... I uh, wonder what really changed, too. I mean, <laughs> other, other than him saying we're going, you know? Sometimes it's for the hardliners, it's that they're going to vote for it with Boris as opposed to voting for it with May. Yeah. Pretty similar deal, so we'll see. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is down 64 and that right now. NASDAQ's off 23. S&P's off four and a half. Now, you know, it's pretty wild that we are just hanging at these highs. Yeah. And we're and, within 1% of all-time highs, basically. Right. And, you know, we've had numbers come in, and numbers are pretty good. <sighs> Bank numbers, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I heard those China numbers, man. Those China numbers are still big in the context of 6%, but I guess in the context of 1992, is that's that what you're saying? That's a remarkable statistic, right? Yeah, um, that's, that's a long me, time Let me ago, pull up, uh, we can just take a quick peek at it. Which one are we on? Oh, I got them both over there, all right. We're over here, is that where? Uh, you know what, I've jumped around, I think. We'll pull it up, but it was six, yeah. six something percent, um, 1992, in terms of their quarter GDP. 6% the last time you got to go back to be that slow of a growth. Um, that's a wake up, man. That's a heads up. You oh. better be listening when China. And what's happened, though, is that you got to take into consideration the economy is so much larger than it was in 1992, though. Yes. So they are going to reach a point of diminishing returns. Right. That's why the U.S. is not gunning for 6% growth because right. we're a very developed economy. In 1992, China was completely undeveloped, right? right? So they are much larger, much more developed. Sure. The, the, it's much harder to grow at double-digit GDP growth when you have that much growth. No yeah. doubt. So let's go take a look at, we got Johnson & Johnson and Netflix. Now, Johnson & Johnson, they're having troubles with their baby powder, no yep. doubt. And it, it came out again today. Now, this is, the thing that's pretty amazing about this is that, you know, they're fighting all these suits right now. And, you know, they're claiming that, <laughs> that they don't have asbestos inside the baby powder. But yet, guess what? This morning, they had a recall. You mean they're not telling the truth? Well, this morning, they had a recall, a batch, uh, because there's the lot number 22318RB, and they're encouraging people to discontinue its use because they actually did find um, a small amount of asbestos inside of the baby powder. You know, so... They got problems. They sure do, man. Netflix. Not to, uh, just to, before uh, you jump, I mean, Johnson, they're dealing with the opioid deal right now, too. Also, So right, it's just right. a plethora of things coming at them. Right. As and they should, man, because so that's let's, ridiculous. Let's, let's look at that thing for a second. So 
Ridiculous. You're at, let's see, is that Johnson? Yeah, it's Johnson yep. & Johnson. We're at 131. Put that on a monthly. Yeah, he's still at highs, but yeah. bottom line, you, can, you know, you, if you get back inside 125, it's going to be trouble. And I believe that huge, yeah, that 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 right there. bar there was when you and I, I believe, were talking about when it first started coming out. There was a huge article about their goal to even hide everything going on in right. this and how um, ingrained in the company it was to squash any type of uh, public release of the data that that for. Decades. Right. And uh, so we went from 148 to 121, like in a heartbeat. Yeah. What and then it? you almost yeah. got it all back, man. What did it get to? Yeah. Got to 145. That's I sick. know. Netflix. Uh, yeah. Netflix is taking it on the chin this morning. What's going on with you Netflix? Got, uh, get, you went up yesterday, and guess what? Just can't handle it today. Bye-bye. Down $10.44. You're at 282. And the remarkable thing is actually under the close of 286 that we had prior to earnings. And that number as well, we actually made it up to... That's 308. I think it was 318. It was, was 318. The, was the yeah, print when you, when you after up, hours? When you were out thinking swimming, it was yeah. 318. Let's see what they have to say. Who's hammering this baby out here today? Uh, it doesn't seem they have much. I mean, they get the Panama Papers coming out, which is going to be a big film for them. Okay, film release, they're getting right? sued over that, I guess. Yeah, and they won. They won, though. They, that was coming out yesterday that uh, they, they couldn't stop them. Um, the laundromat. It's released today. Uh, was transferred to California federal court after the District of Connecticut ruled that didn't have jurisdiction over the parties. Yeah. So I don't that, know if they won that. They, they. I mean, it's a small victory, but it's still going on. It just got moved to so jurisdictions. Let's see. You got uh, Mozak uh, Forenza. This yeah. is the Fonseca. Uh, that's the law firm sued Netflix for libel, trademark infringement, uh, false. Light privacy violations, arguing the laundromat defames and portrays the plaintiffs as ruthless, uncaring <laughs> lawyers who are involved in money laundering, tax evasion, bribery, and other criminal How contact. dare they classify yeah, those totally. lawyers like that? Uh, the film requested a preliminary, uh, preliminary injunction and temporary restraining order. Yeah, the firm had requested uh, that, right? So they were looking for an injunction, Yeah. Um, but the film was released October 18th. Is that today? Maybe it is. Yeah. So Connecticut only allows a state resident or person having a usual place of business there to sue a non-Connecticut corporation um, because that firm is based in Panama and all the named pla plaintiffs are Panama residents. They couldn't sue Netflix in Connecticut. So Netflix Connecticut Foreign Corporation Registration also didn't establish jurisdiction over the company. So they're going to be doing action in California. The defendant is clearly subject to California's jurisdiction as Netflix produced the film in the state, headquartered in the state, and uh, obviously consented to being sued by the plaintiffs there. Yeah, so I guess the plaintiffs didn't want to sue in California I would, yeah. <laughs> at the beginning. Well, they, uh, they're lawyers. They lost. So Yeah, so <laughs> you know, we get to see the film tonight. Yeah, that's the that'll be interesting, that's man, the, the Panama line. Papers. That's... I know. Yeah. So let's go uh, HGZ. So copper. Let's see what copper's sticking its head up a little here. Yeah, so we'll see whether it can get in this higher range. You know, the, the copper equities have been moving. You know, the higher range of copper, though, would be 260. Oh, you got it, 262. You know, so isn't it funny how sometimes when you put... It, what happens, folks, with charts is like when you look at these quick, I mean, it didn't look to me like it got in that higher range. You know what I mean? Because it's like, okay, that's, but bottom line, when you put the crossbar, in, it's just stuck its head up there today. Yeah. And if we go uh, take a look at a few of these copper stocks, you're going to see they've been moving. You know, you got uh, Southern Copper, you know, bottom line is that that bottomed a couple months ago. Yeah. You know, at, uh, yep. down at uh, $29, you're at 34 Yep. Um, FCX, which is not pure copper, but it's one of the largest copper companies also, but it has oil and gold in it. Um, that little baby, um, you know, we'll see whether that's the bottom out there at 843. Okay. The range there, uh, just got in soon, 947. Yeah. And if you pull this back, in both cases, if you do pull them back, you're going to see that they went right into where they had strength and they rejected it. You know, like the low and, what is that, FCX, that's... 2016, $3.52. You know, you can see the contraction. The contraction of volume is pretty dramatic. This is on a monthly. Yeah, so yeah. last month we did, what, $429 million. The month before, 434 And you can see, you know, you get buyers out here. A million shares, 1.1 coming off the lows. So Yeah. And, you know, I suspect they're up there today just because the market's like, and I like 6% for China when it could be a lot worse. I, China rules the copper market, you know. I guess. The that was a miss, rings. though, wasn't it? 
That's us. It was it was a miss. Yes, no, it was a miss for. You mean the growth of China? Yeah. Yeah, but the market liked it. I, I'm just saying it's you know because copper is moving. So okay. They, the market, well, the copper market evidently thought it was going to be a lot less. Yeah. You know? Okay. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Let's go. Uh, Walnut's getting a lot of traction here. Yeah. Let's, that's you know yeah. Let's see when they come out with numbers first. So numbers come out okay. November fourteenth. We got 14th. almost a month. Yeah. And this is this is this another all time high. I think it is. It could be. They're close. They they're yeah. close to. Oh, the eleventh, one twenty seventy one. Okay. Oh, hit one twenty sixty sixty one. Yeah, it's not so, a bad chart. No, it certainly is. And you know, the the bottom hey. line is that they, they between you know the the groceries call in, yeah. pick it up. You know? Yeah, they're they're becoming a real competitor with uh, Amazon. Oh, not quite there yet, but that chart says no it. Targets as well, right? Yeah. Dow, Dow down 61, Nasdaq off 22, S&P's off 4.5, Gold's down 380. You get notes and bonds on the move. A 10-year up 3 ticks, 30-year up 5, and King Dollar down 159. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 69. Nasdaq's off 27. S&P's off 5.5. Now, when we were getting off the air yesterday, uh, oil was coming out, right? Yeah. And that was quite a build. It man. sure was, man. And it didn't move. It got uh, well, uh, it moved. It moved higher, I right? I know, right? <laughs> I think the build was 9.2 million barrels. The estimate was about 
3 million barrels. Now, API did have a big number, which we didn't quite get into. Okay. But I was sitting here, so program ends at about 10.57 a.m. to be right. exact, right? So I'm sitting here waiting for the numbers at 11, and kaboom, man, 9. I'm like, oh, boy, what's oil going to do, right? Yeah. Oil doesn't even budge, man. And budge. then, just like you said, can we drill it down even closer? Because yeah. it's remarkable um, that it actually, so where, let's get, because we did get some volatility. We're going back to yesterday, all right? We're going back to, there's your 11 a.m. bar. And this is what's remarkable, man, is that we come into that bar and you actually traded higher. You know, we were coming yeah. in at, you know, even 10.30. We're trading at 53.26. You get the 11 a.m. bar. We're up to 53.29. You did see a dip down until about 12.10. Yeah. yeah, maybe an hour even. But you reach a low of 52.86, and then kaboom, man, you take off to the top side, and by 4 o'clock, you're trading at 54.16. And then by 8 a.m. this morning, we're trading at 54.50. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about when we came into that number, you're talking about more than, yeah, more than a buck 50 at least. Um, and now, just that, remarkable. that being said, what you have out here today, you're just coming into this downdraft that had been created out here. You know, well, you got a couple of them. You know, the, the big one there was. Uh, October 14th, went from 54 to 52. Yep. You get another one here, uh, 53, 56 to 53. Uh, so let's go look. Uh, this morning, Schlumberger came out with numbers. And, of course, this Schlumberger is a monster, you know, basically, sir, I think it's a service to everything, right? Let's see. Yeah, oil service company uh, provides a range of services, technology, project management, information technology. Yeah. Um, and it was going to get interesting here is that it's up, but these numbers, we'll get into I it, believe, were like a disaster. Boy, right? Yeah, and even I'm just going to pull it over because that top article is the one we already got up here, yeah. man. Not bad. You, you, you got a $12.7 billion write-down, and kaboom, your stock trades higher, man. Right. So Wall Street guessed that write-downs were coming, but analysts were taking it back. Obviously not taking it back too much, no. man, if they're trading higher. By the sheer size of the $12.7 in pre-tax charges reported by the oil services company. So the earnings report was its first since uh, CEO. That's a big one. Yep. Olivier Lepouche, maybe, took the reins in August. The write-downs led the company to post its largest net quarterly loss in at least a decade. They said on their earnings conference call the write-downs were part of the new CEO strategy. The size of the charges were was eyebrow raising, yeah. one analyst said. Um, so most of the charges, 8.8 .8 billion, compromised write downs on goodwill, the intangible asset on a corporate balance sheet that typically arises after the acquisition of another company. Slumberger cited its 2010 purchase of Smith International and its takeover of Cameron International in 2016 and the subsequent deterioration in oh. market conditions. It's, it blows my mind that the the intangible assets on a balance sheet is so dramatic yeah. that, you know, you can have a write down and they still make in, in money. I don't I, yeah. you know, I, that it, we'll go back and you know, to what it, cause I'm curious with their market. We'll, we'll pull them up because yeah, that's quite so a, then they reported another 1.8 billion charge related to pressure pumping business where fracking industry is slowing, citing ongoing okay. economic challenges in Argentina every quarter to 127 million charge there due to its activities in the country. Uh, and also had 62 million in severus costs. Ah, 62 million. Well, six, well, yeah, that's six, like six, that's, gonna, that's, that's, that's pennies six, on. But what, what's the market cap, man? 341 billion. So 12 right. billion. I mean, what is that? That's right. three percent of yeah. the market and cap. You can see they're still making money. And uh, they took in 1.130 billion, and they made dollars 27. So what? No, you're on Walmart. Oh, that makes geez. more sense. Oh my God. That makes more sense. I was like, I'm unbelievable, $300 billion company. Yeah, right. Okay, so let's yeah, see. different world. Okay. Yeah, let's $45 see. billion dollar okay. company. So quite a difference. Um, but it took in revenue. $8.5 billion and made 43 cents. Yeah, so they're a producer, it looks like, yeah. I guess, with $12.4 billion, drilling $9 billion. Um, and you can see the reservoir characterization going down, drilling's going down, production down slightly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you look at three years in oil, not, 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 you know, not a horrible three years, but not a great three years in yeah. the crude market either. Well, there's, yeah. no, there's no doubt, man. It could always be a little worse. Oh, but... look at that chart. Oh, this is dangerous. Here, let's pull this back further. That was, that's 15 years. We're trading at 15-year lows here. Look at this. So let's do it that yep. way right there. What is that? Well, that's 2005. Yep, that's 15 years. Well, we got... 
You can go to 2002. 20 years of stagnant prices. Wow. Let alone getting a 400% return and then giving it all back twice almost. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Up and down, up and down. What a business, man. I wouldn't be so confident the up is coming again on that. Yeah, well, the thing that is, is a mind blower here is that we have so much oil that, to me, like... $55 oil is still, you know, that's pretty good oil. You, I would you agree. Know? But evidently, agree. they went into the business, not just them. A lot of these oil people are saying, okay, we're going to have $100 oil, you know. Yeah. And guess what? We don't, you know. So we get a little pressure in the market here. Let's yeah. see. Let's put putting pressure on it. We'll Dow's go inside. down 94. Yeah, we'll go inside the Dow. Let's see what's happening. We just saw the NASDAQ 100 fall about 50 points. Yeah, <laughs> that, that thing, man, that, yeah. that just loves to move. So you get Big Mac uh, putting nine positive points, Coke putting seven, Home Depot th four, taking away from it, you know, nothing heavy, man. Johnson & Johnson 37, Boeing 20, the usual IBM culprits, 11. Right? Yeah, IBM's in tough shape, you know. Yep. They had their earnings yesterday, yeah. right, just continuing yeah. the slide on that stock. Yeah, so, yep. Yep. Dicey, dicey, man. It is. How about Coca-Cola? Because they have their earnings. Let's let's hey, jump into that. Oh, let me see. So, the the sugar water business, yeah, man. Right. No, they're they're stretching beyond sugar water at yeah. this point. So two hundred, not bad, man. What do you what do you sell? We sell soft drinks and syrups, and right. we're worth a quarter of a trillion dollars. Yeah. But there's uh, very few brands out there worldwide like Coca-Cola. There's no doubt. Yeah. And you got, uh, so the chicken, 9.5 billion, brought 56 cents to the bottom line. Yeah. Non-alcoholic beverages are growing by 10%. Ball investments, they, well, they, they're, they're spinning those off. Okay. That's uh, down 33%. But they, yeah. They're, and they're, and what, they're so smart what they're doing there, folks. All they're really doing is making, you know, you get Coca-Cola, and you're looking at me and say, hey, you know what, you're going to own the, the bottling business now. I'm the distributor. You're going to go. You're going to pick up that overhead. Sure. Okay. Sure. And so it's something like, you know, like the Budweiser deal. Yep. Uh, yep. You, you, you get still, distributors. You're still going to control it. pretty much it. intertwined, but, yet yes. separate right. entities. You're, yeah. you're going to control it, but guess what? Yeah. The bottom line is I'm going to have to put up the, I'm going to have to go to the bank to upkeep the sure. facility to do the whole ball of wax. How and, about Disney? Can we take a look? Because yeah. uh, Netflix, of course, reeling back. How has Disney fared over the last couple of days um, as they're going to be a competitor in the coming future? Yeah. And you'd yeah. expect, I mean, higher yesterday. And, uh, you know, positive today. Pretty muted, but, you know, Disney, man. If you're a buyer in the long haul of Disney, not bad when you just got a pullback all the way from 145 down to 130. Yes. Um, yes. Disney, believe... Disney, uh, another one of those Let's... brands that oh, just it's... going nowhere, man. You know, if yeah. you're a long-term retirement investor, yeah. I see I see great things for a company like Disney in terms and, of... And you get a 1.3% dividend. Yeah. I mean, listen... Content is king, man. Yeah, and, you know, we just talked about, you know, Netflix, they're going to have the Panama Papers. Well, Disney's going to have... Name it, right? The Mickey Mouse Show. The they word. already have that's it. That's what yes. I'm saying. They so have proven deals. They, that's that's. Can you imagine being in the Netflix offices and saying, "All right, how do we compete with Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck?" You know, um, yeah. I can't even name them all. In the right. Few and seconds. the uh, what are all the cartoons? The Superman. The, exactly. You know. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. 
Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks, and uh, we will continue with uh, WeWork, okay, because this is valuation-wise, You can, if, if we all can learn anything out of this, is that buyer beware Oof. on a continual man, basis. Oh, man. So this just came across the uh, tape here, yeah, folks. Yeah. SoftBank uh, is assembling a rescue financial package uh, for WeWork that may value the office sharing company at $8 billion. Is that, is, that, is that a typo? It says below $8 billion. Below $8 billion. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give them that extra money, man. Look They're below. Uh, so the new figure, I mean, if you've been following, obviously, a fraction of the $47 billion that they got just in January yep. from SoftBank. Talks are fluid and the terms could change. Well, obviously, that's the case until everything is signed. We work reeling since it scrapped its IPO, considering dual plans from SoftBank and JP Morgan to shore up its finances before it runs out of cash as early as next month. And... Um, so JP Morgan, we've talked about this. I think this is just summarizing the rest of it, that they're pitching to investors $5 billion junk debt package for WeWork, unsecured and secured notes. Uh, but man, oh man, it just continues, right? Yeah, Adam Newman, uh, bottom line, you know, we sold those uh, $700 million, uh, in shares. Um, sweet move. Yeah, that's, now that's, you're saying he was able to do that during one of the private offerings himself, that's right? Correct. Yeah, in that's terms correct. of in he, the past, he, yes. He, you know, and, that I was it. and that was... You know, only about six to eight months prior to where they were pushing out, you know, these valuations. So he got a good value for that, right? Is that, yeah, we don't yeah, know, I'm but sure you know, uh, and part I, of the I, I, I just expect maybe it will come out what, what he got. You know yeah, what I mean? because part of uh, the angst towards the IPO is that was part of it, where he was yes. able to sell shares. Other investors were not given even that right. It's right. Like, hold on, the CEO is given preferential treatment to sell out his shares as you're going on the road to pitch an IPO. Yeah. Um, and then the other side of it, you know, you got people, it's just, it's a sensational story. So if you want to catch a headline, say something about WeWork, man, you'll get okay, out so there. Okay, so this is cool, yeah. right? Okay. So I saw this this morning. So this yeah. is an hour ago. This is not recent, as in it's recent this morning, but not having to do with the $8 billion that just came out. Okay. But yeah, Barry Sternlicht. Uh, yeah. Are you familiar with him? I'm not myself. I am, and he's okay. really, this guy is really a smart guy, and in, in He's so there been he is right a here. real real estate investor for years. I mean, okay. I, he had, um, I, I believe he, yeah, Starwood. He, he it was okay. all, uh, he just sold Starwood all. Starwood Capital. Cool. Yeah, he all stole all the stuff. 60 star billion in assets. Yeah, he sold all the Starwood, like uh, I mean, this, yeah, the Starwood brand to Marriott. I mean, th this okay. is like Hilton. Okay. You know, the guy really, I, I, I like how he sets things up, but this is. This is actually good news. So he, unless we work, I'm sure. What, right? we, what we don't know yet has he invested. I was thinking the same thing, man. <laughs> same thing. You always got to question yeah. where the information's coming from, right? right? So he says it was built oh. for hyper growth, and uh, and that is too capital intensive. Said Sternler, who co-founded Starwood Capital in 1991, yeah. Starwood Hotels, now part of Marriott. Um, 
So let's see. In the past, had a negative outlook on WeWork. Well, he probably had a negative outlook at 47 yeah. million. He's probably right. saying maybe at eight. Uh, he says I'm conflicted in this. Um, we're oh look, he would say we're involved. Yep. There you go. Uh, we'll close that one because that, that yeah. that's a meaningless article then. <laughs> uh, it's you know. No, it, no. Take it for what it's worth. Though, yes. Right? That's it. No, take you, it you have to because what ends up happening, you know. Uh, when you look at uh, Sam Zell, okay, he's yep. from Chicago, and they yep. used to call him the Grave Digger. Okay, so he made his mark in the '80s. When uh, what happened in the '80s, folks? In '89, um, the United States had a huge amount of uh, Middle East money and from Japan. They they were the two biggest economies, and they came into the cities and they bought everything. Um, downtown Boston, uh, you know, a quarter of it was owned by the Middle East investors. Uh, uh, well, we 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 golf when we come back from Alaska. Um, oh, Pebble Beach. Okay. okay, the Japanese came in and bought all those golf courses. Bottom line, the market crashed out, and these both economies they lost everything. Okay. They, they lost all. And Sam Zell is the one who came in and bought it. Okay, so now I'll fast forward to now. Okay, so he made his mark there. Then, right at two thousand and five, he sold. His whole company to Blackstone. Okay. So this is a great story. Blackstone had to write it down by 30%. Okay. Okay. That they never thought they'd get their money back. Just last week, it took them, uh, so 2005, it took 15, them 14 yeah. years, and it was supposed to be a 10 year deal. Bottom line, it took them 14 years, but they finally made money. Okay. Okay. So anyway, they, I was listening to him, and he was explaining, as we've talked about before, this is just a regular real estate company. Right. right. You know, so like the evaluation, is, you know, not there. Sure. I mean, if they bring the valuation down, right. then good. You get a real estate company, sure. you're renting spaces. Sure. And he was on the same um, aspect, though, as the guy from the Federal Reserve from Boston, um, that if, in fact, they get trouble in trouble in a couple cities, it could be trouble for that market in that sure. city. Sure. You know, that you, yeah. you know, you get too a, big to fail type deal when it, you when you own so much of the real estate. Exactly, you plummet. You have all this real estate that's right. now just basically in a BK company. Right. Right. And then you know, you and I went in there, we rented the space, and then all of a sudden, you know, a crash comes, yeah. and we said, okay, what are we going to do? Sure, yeah. uncertainty, yeah. never yeah. a good deal. Um, <laughs> interesting to say the least, man. We work. We'll see how that plays out. Eight billion dollars. I mean, just remarkable the the difference in that valuation. Oh, that's um, intense, man. And what, I mean, maybe they're a real real estate company, but what if they, because they've taken out debt as well oh, on yeah. a much higher valuation, right. so they, they have a lot of debt to handle, and they're burning cash. Right. I think, I don't, I don't know how the fundamentals work on most real estate companies, but I think that they have some some pretty substantial leases that they've signed that, that they can't pay oh, for. That's the, right, huge, you know? it's yeah. a huge problem. And yeah. what happens on a commercial real estate lease, folks, is that let's say you sign a lease for 15 years. Let's just say it's, uh, I don't know, 25000 a month or something sure. like this, okay? The bottom line, when you default, I can't do the math over my head, but it's probably about $15 million. Well, you don't own $25,000. You're already signed for $15 million. Sure, right. You own the $15 million from yeah. the bottom line. They might have outs, right? No, I mean, you're Most just saying. of them don't. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, it's yeah. going to take years. You're going to have to go to court to collect that. Sure, sure. But most times that you're inside an LLC and no one's going to have that $15 million right. anyway. But of that's course. what crashes the real estate oh, market yeah, yeah. in general. Yeah. There'll be a battle I mean? for it. No There'll be what. a battle, yeah. you know. So yeah. it's, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of moving pieces, but, you know, we'll see where the whole baby it does shake out. So. And let's see. They're talking about rate cuts in the den, probabilities, Fed funds, futures. What are we at? So we're sitting right now at 1.75 to 2, yeah. the odds that we're getting a high, uh, hike, listen to me, a cut, October 30th, 86% right that's now. That's a good number. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know. And then. Uh, and that's at market at highs. You can imagine if we pull back at all. Oh, man, right. <laughs> if and we then, pull back at all, you'll see that December one go up. And then you go the odds that we get two cuts in two meetings at about 30% right now. Right. Yeah. Right. And then even to, to combine them, that you get a cut over the next two meetings you're looking at 91%, you know, because you only have a 9% chance that we're sitting where we are by December. Yeah. So cuts coming. Cuts coming. They better and be. And if we go take a look at the 10 year, let's just look at this because, you know, this simple, is. Simple, simple number. I like it. 1.75, I think, right? <laughs> nice, Seriously. nice round. Yeah, 1.7449. We'll call it 1.75. Simple math. Yeah. Volatility in that bond market, man. Beginning of August, hold on to your hats. 2% yep. to 1.44, I think is the low. 1.42. Right. Back up to 1.9. Yep. Back down to 1.5.
and we're sitting at 1.75 after just being at 1.8 last week, I think. Yeah. That sounds high now. It does. <laughs> yeah, it really I does. I like 1.42. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the whole world is like in one. <laughs> yeah, it, it, seriously. Dow. Dow's down 84. Nasdaq's up 44. S&P's down 8. We're going to be right back, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And after 16 years of all starts, multiple developers, we are going to see the American Dream Mall open in New Jersey, October 25th. Now, this is quite a story. Quite a name, American Dream Mall. Totally. That puts some, uh, well, and these these were the original developers of Mall of America. In, that's a good uh, one as well. In Why Min not? Minneapolis, I think. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Biggest mall out there in yeah. the country, right? So uh, they're expecting 40 million visitors a year, and the story really is cool. We only got a couple minutes to the end yeah. of the program here, but they're talking about, so it's in New Jersey, right across from the Hudson, right? And they're talking about whether they're going to eat everybody else's lunch, Oof. basically, because, yeah, things have been going well, but, man, it's pretty cool when you get in here. So although brick-and-mortar shopping overall has been on the decline, right, yeah. as we all know, right. uh, you've seen many shopping centers in northern New Jersey have had a pretty successful run, partially because the state doesn't charge sales tax on clothing, yeah. a welcome relief from the 8.875 that they pay just over the Hudson in Manhattan. It's huge. So all those Manhattan shoppers, 
They skip across the Hudson and yep. save almost 9%. And remarkable here when you get this down this. So Paramus, New Jersey, for example, has boasted having the busiest retail zip code in the country. Yeah. Despite being located in Bergen County, the last in the state with blue laws that they not even open on Sunday. I mean, so, just, so they get the busiest zip code and they don't open on Sunday. That's right. Retail, impressive. retail wise. That's yeah, impressive. it is. But, you know, hey, man, if you got everybody from Manhattan coming oh, over to totally. buy your clothes. Totally. Oof. And this is going to be like an amusement park, too, evidently. It's um, 40 I don't million it's not, visitors a year, man. Yeah, no, right. you're right. It's, it's entertainment. entertainment. Right, um, right, right. You know, you don't get 40 million people marching through just to visit right. J.C. Penney and Macy's. And then, um, then the real question is, uh, oh, yeah, it is. It's going to be the largest indoor theme park. Oh okay. My God. Including ski, snow skiing and DreamWorks water park. 40 million a year. What is that? That's, that's more than 3 million every month. Big time. Get your skis on, folks. Get your get, get, get skis on and your bathing suits simultaneously. All right, you hear it? We're wrapping up. Thanks, folks. Stay right there, folks. Uh, Fast Market. I'm Ann Basil Chapman, Steve Rose, Dave White. I'll be back. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wham! Go get them, folks.